Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm fine. How are you? Oh, it's fine. It's it's. Uh, I think it's good morning for you. It's not yet afternoon. In our country, yes. it's afternoon. So good it morning also, to all of you. No, it is afternoon here. Oh, it's afternoon. What is the time over it, there? It is one p.m. Oh, I see. It's one p.m. Okay. At our place, it is three thirty. So we are uh, two and a half hours ahead of your uh, country. You are at Uganda, right? If I am not mistaken. Yes, yes, yes. Uganda. Okay. Okay. See, I remember. Okay. So uh, let's start. Okay. I have some uh, videos also for you with one or two minutes video. Okay. Just a minute. So you got the PPT, na? Yesterday I have, uh, not yesterday, today morning I have mailed it to you. You received the PPT, Denmark? Yes, I have received them. Thank you. I have received them. Okay, okay thank you. So uh, today we'll be uh, discussing on unit uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 5 units. Uh, one minute, huh? So uh, here we go. I'll show you the PPT. Yes. Uh, so today we'll be covering uh, unit. Yesterday we did uh, three, four, five. Today we'll be covering six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and uh, that is uh, unit six. It's about uh, tourism regulations. Unit 7 is about statistics and measurement, why it is very important, you know, and uh, Unit 8 is about modes of transport, and 9 is about tourist accommodation, 10 is about informal services. So um, here we go. Uh, like yesterday, you know, we learned about like yesterday's just to, uh, you know, refresh, like we had uh, learned about tourism significance, the types of tourism forms, what do you mean by inbound and outbound tourism, then carrying capacity, then what are tourist products, what are the travel motivators, then uh, what is about grand tour and silk tour, this is very important, you know, you should remember what is grand tour, what is silk tour, these are very important basic questions that have been asked in any interview even in uh, like you know assignment questions you have even uh, when you sit for your exams you know they mention key what are the tourism products what are the travel motivators these are very important uh, when you I mean especially these questions are very important right so coming to uh, unit six that is about uh, tourism regulations now uh, if you are into tourism uh, business if you are a tourism professional uh, you need to know about uh, why tourism, uh, you know, why these legal regulations there should be. I mean, you should be aware of all these regulations. So that can be your like, uh, that can include your passport, that can include your visa, you know, so uh, and different types of uh, visas and education. I mean, uh, uh, different types of passports are there. So, um, and there should be a proper uh, development of the infrastructure and a uniform regulatory code for tourism because it is not possible without proper support for the tourism legislation. So tourism regulations are basically, you can say they are the, uh, you know, uh, you, they are the, uh, when we talk about tourism regulations, they are basically the laws as well as uh, you, uh, guidelines uh, which help to uh, govern uh, the operation of uh, tourism related activities and services in a particular region or a 
uh, country. Now, uh, what happens, these regulations are basically uh, put in place to ensure that, you know, uh, the there's uh, I mean the safety of uh, safety and well-being of the tourists they are being protected I mean they are being taken care of and uh, it also same at the same way uh, I mean there should be uh, they should able to protect the natural and cultural resources of a particular destination then overall the quality of the tourism experience that should be I mean these are all being uh, guideline. So that is what is tourism travel regulation, tourism regulations is all about. So some of the common tourism regulations, you know, include like licensing and permits. Like, you know, if you wanted to open a hotel, if you wanted to have, run a bar, so you need to have the license and permit. So there are license and permits, there are health and safety standards, uh, safety standards, and there is the environmental protection. These are all come under travel regulations. Then you have... Uh, cultural preservations, then you have consumer protection, then you have employment uh, laws. If you are if you are being employed in a different country, you have to go as per the laws of that particular country. Then there are also taxations. Then there are also travel restrictions that you are aware of, like during the COVID time, you are not able to travel to these places. And even when you got the permission, you had to have the certificates and all, you know, permissions and all from your particular country, from your particular state, you should have those certificates, you know, so those are not travel restrictions. So uh, let's start like, you know, when we talk about licensing and permits, so many uh, tourism related business, uh, such as basically the hotels, the tour operators, the travel agents, and the transportation services, they are required to obtain specific licenses and permits to obtain legally. For example, even if you are in a country, if you are traveling from one state to another state by road, then you need to have the vehicle permission. Otherwise, you won't be allowed to travel from one state to another state. So that is there. Similarly, as I told you, you know, there are different laws and all. Like if you wanted to open a, uh, a bar, then you need to have the license of that. Even like hotels, you know, they wanted like a hotel maybe having all the star category facilities, a hotel, you know, like they are at par with any three star or four star properties. But they are still not, they don't have the proper permission. Like, you know, who does the classification of the hotels? Like, um, you know, you have the FHRI, that is yesterday we, uh, I explained about it, that FHRI, Federation of Hotel and Restaurant Approval Classification Committee. They go to the hotel with the, you know, they have a general manager of the hotel, then the principal of a, who are in the committee, like the general manager of the hotel, the principal of a hotel management uh, college, then uh, our IS officer, like uh, Indian Administrative Services from uh, tourism department. So they all need to, plus a tour operator, you know. Uh, so they need to be on this committee who <clears throat> finalize whether the approval should be given to a particular hotel. So three star, four star, five star, you have, or you also need to pay fees for that. So there are different license and permits. Then, um, you know, like uh, when even like passport and visa requirements are also very necessary. So it is very important for a, any tourist or visitor when they travel from one country to the another country, we need to have the passport details. You have to have the visa details, you know, where the passport contains the date of issue, date of expiry date, then valid. If you are traveling to a visiting a different country, you know, then you, the validity should be there. Like in your visa, it's been mentioned how many days you are, you'll be visiting that country. Now, further, uh, there are different types of visas, you know, like tourist visa, business visa, then employment visa. Uh, those who are on uh, students, they get student visa. Those who are on uh, just for holiday, they get the tourist visa. Those who are on uh, official purpose, they get the business visa. Uh, so, and sometimes this transit visa, this is basically, you know, suppose you are um, uh, going from India to US. So there is, I mean, no direct flight. You have to go via some other country. So suppose you from move from uh, Delhi to, uh, you go to uh, Dubai, okay? And then you have a direct flight from Dubai to um, uh, US, okay? So what happened uh, that from Delhi to Dubai is not that it's like four hours uh, flight, but from Dubai to uh, US, that will be 
around uh, 14 to 16 hours flight. So when you go to Dubai, no, he will be passing through that country. So that is why transit and you wanted, if you want, you can stay there for one or two days or few hours. You just want to, if you wanted to stay in the airport itself, you need not require a transit visa. But if you think, you know, you have few hours with you, maybe a day with you, you have reached Dubai early in the morning and your flight to US is in the night. So you have 10 to 12 hours in the in your hand. So what you think? You think, no, I should go do some sightseeing near about, you know. So in that way, once you go out of there, once you step out of the airport, you need to have a visa that is known as transit visa. Okay. So this is what happens. Now, each visa has some validity also. Like, uh, you know, if you're on official uh, purpose and all that, maybe the two years visa, like, you know, somebody from foreigners coming to India on official work, they are known as expatriates. So they have a different registration form, like, you know, expatriates. So similar, if you are on, on a student visa, you may be allowed to stay for unless and until your uh, program course gets over. After that, you have to extend your visa. So there are a lot of visas depending on. So these are being taken care by the, these are being uh, decided by the uh, governments of the country, particular country. And these visas, the services uh, and all this uh, can be, uh, I mean, uh, it can be easily accessed with the help of the Travel agents like you can easily go to the visa office, like passport office, get your passport done, and to also the visa office. But uh, yes, the travel agents facilitates you. I mean, you can do directly or also to the travel agent who will facilitate you to in providing all these services in lieu of you have to uh, pay for the charges. Okay, so <clears throat> then um, one second. Yes, like these are types of Indian visa I told you, like tourist Indian visa, I mean transit visa, then employment visa, student visa, research visa, sports visa. So there are a lot of visas are there. Okay. Then a uh, few things I have also mentioned here, you know, foreigners from uh, Commonwealth countries, there are 54 Commonwealth countries, they are not required to obtain visa for entering these countries, you know. Uh, where Ministry of Labor and Ministry of Home Affairs are directed otherwise. So there are these uh, policies keep on changing and all. So you have to be very particular uh, whilst doing all this. And uh, you can get all the informations on the website and all. Okay. And uh, yes, um, yes, you can see I have also given you like if you, these are applications should be filled at the following link and all you can have this visa immigration link so you have to do a lot of exploring and uh, these are some special permits like india we have you know these are the states in india which shares the borders with the other countries you know so that is the reason but uh, you did not uh, maybe you need a special entry permit for some places to visit like andaman and nicobar islands Lakshwadeep and all uh, and this uh, permit is usually valid for a maximum period it keeps on changing okay depending on your purpose of visit whether you are a student whether you are an official purpose or whether you are on a, a holiday so it varies from uh, I mean I, I mean it varies you know from depend from time to time so uh, there are some beauty free uh, regulations also like when exporting goods and all uh, you know, when exporting goods to countries that do not belong to uh, European Union uh, countries, there are European Union countries, there are 27 countries, customs clearance based on the custom regulations is uh, required. So for all these, these are some duty-free regulations apply for India, where I have mentioned the uh, uh, link also, like uh, you can, you know, when you are going through this slide, as I have shared you this slide, because time is also a constraint. In within two hours, I have to finish this all chapters, okay? So you can go to these websites, you can have a look. So you'll have a, uh, I mean, detailed information, right? So there are also currency economic regulations are also there, uh, like exchange of currencies and all. If you want to um, exchange currencies, you can uh, go to, uh, suppose if you are staying in a hotel, then the hotel would, if you are a foreign national, and if you want to change some currencies, and if you're staying in a hotel, then it will be, the hotel will change, uh, make the, I mean, you know, the currencies will be exchanged. 
uh, I mean, they are basically the money changers. Uh, they won't charge anything extra from you because you are an in-house guest of that particular hotel. But if you are not staying in a hotel uh, and you wanted to exchange some currencies, so there are other, you know, you can get it done from um, travel agents and also money changers are there, like Western Union money exchange. Then you have the Thomas Cook, then Cox and Kings. So these are all the travel agents who will exchange the currency for you. And uh, in that, yes, this is also very important. In lieu of that, you exchange, when you exchange your currencies, you also get a certificate. So exchange certificate is a must to re-exchange unused rupee on, rupee on leaving India. Suppose you are coming from your country and you want to exchange currency. So, you know, so you can easily have those whenever, whenever you go to exchange currency because every day the value of the currency changes. Every day it changes and it is being decided by the Reserve Bank of India. So what happened if today, you know, I'm giving an example that today the dollar rate is uh, 80. Tomorrow it will be 81. Yesterday it was 79. So it keeps on changing. So once you change your currency, in lieu of that, you are being given a certificate also. You know, that is known as foreign exchange currency certificate. That is very important. You have to retain those certificates. The reason behind is that, you know, so that people cannot cheat you. That is one reason. Secondly, the thing is that uh, tomorrow when you are leaving your country, maybe after one week you are leaving your country and now you don't require the currency uh, anymore you know so you have to re-exchange so while re-exchanging this exchange certificate is a must to re-exchange unused rupee on leaving the uh, country so uh, i have also wanted to uh, mention here uh, you know there are some health uh, health insurances like health and safety standards are also there you know tourism uh, regulation often includes requirements for uh, businesses to adhere to certain health and safety standards to ensure the well-being of tourists so when you are going to visiting a different country there's health insurance also there then your uh, luggage insurance is there so many lot of insurances are there and especially you know whenever you uh, whenever you uh, purchase your tickets and all sometimes you know you might have seen they include key would you like to uh, include your uh, baggage insurance would you like to include your but when Going abroad, you know, uh, health insurance is very, uh, I mean, very much necessary. It is a very necessity because medical in uh, abroad is really very expensive. So this is what happens, okay? This is very much necessary. You should be uh, abide by all the rules and regulations as decided by the government of that particular uh, country. So uh, then also you have... Um, uh, other insurances like you know environmental protection like uh, you know regulations environmental protections in the sense there are some regulations which should uh, which are there to protect the natural resources and wildlife from the negative impacts of tourism activities such as you know uh, restrictions to on building development in ecological sensitive areas whenever you visit a monument or whenever you visit a um, wildlife sanctuary you have to pay the entry fee why you have to pay the entry fee the reason behind is that you know uh, for the uh, upkeep of the uh, environment for the upkeep of the uh, you know uh, flora and fauna of that particular area for the infrastructure development and all and you might have seen also uh, like you know like in india we have like for indians the ticket fare is this much i mean entry fee is this much and for foreign nationals they have a different rate also okay so this is very uh, important then you have all this um, uh, consumer protection uh, because uh, you know regulations uh, consumer protections like uh, regulations may require tourist businesses to provide transparent pricing fair cancellation policies and clear information to consumers. So why this uh, consumer protection is very important? Suppose you are uh, making a uh, travel booking, your uh, flight booking, okay? So due to some uh, due to some issues, you wanted to change the dates. So now the, all those are mentioned. Ki if you cancel the flight ticket, this much will be refunded to. If you change the date, this much will be refunded to. So you are you all are all aware of all this sensitization is very important so that consumers or customers they are not being cheated. Okay, that is why it is very important. Then um, 
uh, one more thing i just wanted to say uh, add over here one minute um, yes like you know some uh, custom regulations like i'm talking about this income tax and all like uh, the currency especially these comes under economic regulations so what do you mean by economic regulations basically the inbound tourist as well as the outbound tourist is very subject to following economic um, uh, regulations like currency you know tourists are uh, as i told you tourists are not allowed to bring indian currencies into the country or take it out of the country so whenever you are getting something whether it's currency or whether it is a jewelry is like jewelry is in the sense like gold or diamond so you have to mention all those you know uh, you have a form where you have to fill up all those so even at the time of so those restrictions are there so whatever you are getting inside the country when you are visiting a country that means when you are entering a country you have to ensure you have to give a um, uh, i mean the regi i mean form is there where you have to give all the detailed informations these are the uh, jewelries you know gold or diamond or the currencies you are carrying with you so that at the time of uh, departure you can also while going out at the time of departure you can show these were the currencies which you had uh, brought with you when entering the uh, country so basically you have it is a declaration form so on arrivals the visitors should declare all the currencies they carry and they are you know supposed to exchange the currencies as i have already mentioned at the hotels where you are an in house guest or if you are not staying at hotel or something where if you feel no i don't want to get it uh, uh, exchange in the hotel because all time the facilities are not there then you can get the currencies exchange at different banks as well as the travel agents that i have mentioned through authorized dealers that has to be there so and with each exchange of currency there are you know they are issued as i mean exchange certificate is being issued which is also very important and this should be written and to re exchange unused currency while leaving the uh, country okay so that is very important so you can say the tourist must not exchange currency in black market that is also very important then coming to this income tax yes now what do you mean by this in income tax basically if a person not domiciled in india intends to stay but if he is not a domicile you know of the country uh, but if he intends to stay in the country for uh, more than 3 months or uh, plus uh, then an income tax uh, clearance certificate is also required why this income tax clearance certificate is required it is required in order to leave the country let's say after like it is you know when you leave the country you have to ensure that uh, you have a proper income tax clearance certificate now this uh, document will prove that the person staying in india was financed by his own money and not working or selling his goods that is the thing that is why this income tax certificate and the foreign sections of the income tax uh, department is there at delhi that is the capital city of india then other metro cities that is kolkata chennai and mumbai they specially issue this certificates on the basis of the person's passport like you know once uh, how they give you this income tax certificate like usually these certificates are being provided on the basis of your income uh, passport details your visa details and currency exchange receipts which you have been used by the uh, person and there is also foreign travel tax what is uh, foreign uh, travel tax for international travel from indian airports you know some amount must be paid for travel to the neighboring countries and also to travel to other some fees is there particular so this tax has to be basically paid by international travelers from indian airports for travel to all other countries as applicable including even the uh, child you know infants not occupying the seat so usually tourism taxes are small fees they are not in a very huge amount but yes uh, they are very less amount they are very small fees usually levied indirectly through accommodation providers or holiday companies and typically aimed at overnight visitors okay then i was telling you about uh, health regulations yeah, as i have already health and safety standards i have already informed like uh, like you know uh, like uh, earlier like even uh, 
uh, one year ago we had to provide the vaccination certificate even if you're moving from one state to another state and from moving from one country to another country was also uh, you know it was very much required this vaccination certificates and all okay so it varies from country because each country or each state have their own rules regulations and policies and um, and whenever uh, as i have mentioned whenever you visit a different i mean uh, abroad you should have a health insurance that is very important but beside this uh, insurance so what happened you can always purchase this insurance if you uh, if you make you know if you purchase ticket online then you can easily everything is being mentioned you can pay the extra amount and include in your uh, flight ticket and if not you can also get it done from the uh, travel agents but uh, beside this health insurance there are environmental protection as i told you those are also regulations then there is also cultural uh, preservations so this uh, regulations basically uh, what i mean this regulations may require tourism businesses to provide transparent pricing uh, i mean sorry the uh, i mean cultural is basically regulations which aim to protect the cultural heritage of a particular uh, destination and so that over commercialization or exploitation by tourists does not take place because you know as i told you you know there is mass tourism and all carrying capacity is there so sometimes you know the areas are being over exploited because the um, uh, and uh, i mean the uh, destination is not able to carry that much uh, tourists but because of this travel agents and all you know the uh, area becomes overpopulated over commercialized so to have a control on that why this cultural preservation is also there then you have employment laws also uh you know uh, employment laws like you know tourism regulations may include labor laws uh, to protect the rights of workers in the industry such as you know you should have fair wages working conditions even like students and all coming ab uh, i mean uh, those who are here to study or our students going abroad for study they also are bound by this also in india there are also laws to recognize the uh, rights of the tourists basically why these laws are being framed these laws are being framed to recognize to protect the rights of the tourists to recognize the right of the tourists so in india you know the administrative uh, setup in india divides the country into states as you know like you know there are uh, states there are union territories and uh, i mean uh, then further the states are also have districts and all and each district in the state is being uh, you know uh, the head of the uh, state uh, i mean we have a district magistrate for the head of a, a, a district that is a dist we have a district uh, magistrate so you have to get all those you know uh, these laws regulations policies these are being framed by all the lawmakers like district magistrates are also there so tourist for any laws you know pertaining to their stay or accommodation or visiting any countries they can contact this officials in case any difficulty arises and because they are the one who maintains the law and order in the district in the state in the country right so hmm, there are also laws on cheating so you know uh, you might have seen also many foreigners are sometimes being cheated and they take the help of the uh, police officials they take the uh, help of the you know um, uh, law and order of the that is the uh, courts uh, who i mean the law and order of the country they take the help of the courts and uh, obviously there are also grievance sales where you can the tourist can you know uh, put on their uh, complaints into the grievance cell there are departments which handles those and the tourism professional must be aware like what type of problems usually takes place so they should be very much aware of such problems before planning all these tourism activities and constituting a grievance cell should handle the tourist complaints in an effective manner because you know as i told you matlab slowly like uh, today's like we are in the tourism uh, fundamentals like ts1 is all about tourism fundamentals so you will be learning about the fundamentals when you are uh, going i mean tourism where you have other um, uh, i mean there's ts3 ts6 where you'll be learning about tourism environment where you'll be learning about tourism marketing 
so other faculties will be taking your classes on that so here they are just throwing light you know the fundamentals you should know if you are a tourism professional you should be aware of all this it is not only a question of tourism professional but as a uh, citizen of any country you should know like minimum uh, laws regulations that protect your citizenship that you should be sensitized about right so <clears throat> these uh, these are you know uh, shopping mall practices yes you know you are being cheated so what happened this is also a very important thing if you buy from this uh, uh, not from a, you know just a normal showrooms and all so they you will buy at a very higher price but you know government of india they have all this uh, showrooms you know which is another uh, ministry of handicrafts ministry of textiles where you wanted to buy any artifacts where you wanted to buy any handicrafts and handlooms so you can purchase you can go to those shops you are sure ki that they won't cheat you the prices is same for whether it's a indian national or whether it is a foreign national but if you buy from the you know uh, from other shops which are not being regularized you know so they have the tendency to cheat the foreigners because indians they know they will bargain and all but foreigners you know they have that uh, uh, you know they likely to cheat the foreigners but yes the foreigners should also know that they can go to this uh, handicraft shops which are under the ministry of textiles ministry of handlooms and handicrafts so they will be sure that they are not being cheated okay uh, then of course the accommodation and catering regulations there is a, as i told you you know hotels they have this taxes and all then um, uh, even um, uh, when, if you are a foreigner so first thing you know they ask for your passport details and all so they you know this passport uh, details are being sent to the FHRI office that is for, uh, FHRI offices that is foreigners regional registration office FRRO office sorry it is known as FRRO office foreigners regional registration office so they are the one they are able to keep a track you know how many foreign visitors are particularly arriving at their place okay so uh, especially there are different like legislation for hospitality sector now this includes our laws on income tax the service tax whenever you go to any hotel you have service tax you have expenditure tax you have gst then you have excise duty you have luxury tax also then you have entertainment tax there is a lot of tax as well as laws on employment matters also like esi act employment matters there is also a, a different unit also on that when you are working in any hotel uh, when you are working any uh, tourism organization or hotel or any organization you have this all you, you should know about the esi act what are the uh, benefits you will be providing that you'll go into detail so uh, right now there are some you know as a guest you should know what is the guest right to privacy what are the high standards of care then what are the hotel managers rule uh, so that you are not being cheated you know so what is the duty to protect the person and the property of guest then there are some catering regulations various re legislations are also included like you know consumer protection to quality control then pricing policy then there are also hygienic conditions safety and security is very important part of any industry okay so legislation also covers the hygiene of those who are employed to cook and serve food items equipments and technology to retain the professional standards that is the reason you know if you are being employed in a hotel in the uh, fnb department where you have to food and beverage department where you have to uh, prepare food where you have to uh, serve the food to the guests so since you will be handling with the food products the uh, consumable items then equipments and technology so you should be well you know it should cover your hygienic from hygienic point of view there are some legislations are there which would help you to which would help the uh, management the industry to retain the professional standards so there is this prevention of food adulteration act <clears throat> uh, you know so uh, which would protect the customers from intake of poisonous or harmful food okay then there is the air prevention and control of pollution act to curb measures which lead to air pollution then there is the water prevention and control of pollution act that was in 9 act 1974 for the prevention and control of water pollution by hotels so these are being maintained by the hotels when you will be 
joining any hotels so you have to know the details of this when you'll be joining a tourist uh, like you join as a tourist guide or you'll be working for a uh, any travel agent tour operator they have their laws regulations you know so that is how everything then as i told you you have this environmental protection and conservation um, uh, regulation act where preservation and maintenance is an in depth uh, study and heritage conservation and maintenance is also of great importance then uh, yes you do also have this uh, uh, you know taxations uh, travel restrictions uh, as i told so you can uh, like you know summarize it like uh, travel regulations they always play a very significant uh, role from and it varies from one country to another and it is important not only for the tourists but also for the business organizations for the employees the stakeholders to be aware to be sensitized and they should comply with this regulations when traveling or operating in a new destination okay that is very important so um, yes uh, that was uh, i would before so we would move to unit 7 statistics and measurement but before moving to that i would like to show you a, um, a video which is of 2 minutes huh? one sec yeah this is on tourism and hospitality law one sec so here you go it's about the tourism and hospitality law just see the video so whatever we have learned that's all been summarized here so uh, that was uh, you know the thing is that you have seen the video uh, that is very important because um, you need to uh, protect you have to check care about the safety and security of the your customers and they are very valuable for you 
at the same time you also do have the reputation okay so you have to be abide by the rules and regulations that is all about tourism and hospitality law now moving to the next uh, one minute unit um, Yeah, here we go uh, about the statistics and measurement. Um, hmm, about statistics and uh, measurement, uh, you know, uh, like uh, tourism statistics. These are basically, um, as I told you, you know, I just gave you an example whenever a foreigner guest checks into the hotel. Uh, I mean, not also you have an. Uh, you, you, I mean, you have to collect the passport details, the visa details. So, you know, they can find which travelers are visiting from which country, period of time, demographic profile. Similarly, it's not only about foreigners, even inbound tourists that is from within the country visiting from one destination to another station. So all these informations are being gathered. And once they are being gathered, they are being sent to the uh, tourism offices. I'll show a video on on that also, how it is being done. So this is how tourism statistics are gathered and published by every country today. Now, if you wanted to know ki how many visitors are there from Uganda in India, so you can get the easily. Today, I'll show you the website. I'll show you that dashboard also. So that, you know, once you see, so you can export there. You will get a lot of information. Whatever you are studying in tourism, I want that, uh, you know, it's my request to all of you. Uh, since you all are a, a learner of uh, tourism, like, you know, student of IGNO tourism. So uh, tourism and hospitality services management. So you should be aware what India's tourism laws is and everything about tourism. So once you, they have their own website and once you click those, you'll come to know all the informations, how many tourists are there, what are the tourists, uh, which are the destinations, when should you visit those places, what is the distance, the network, like whether uh, I mean, I mean, whether you can travel there by ra uh, road, rails or airways or sea routes are there, what are the accommodation, type of accommodation, what is the climatic conditions, if you wanted to stay in hotels, what are the budgets, everything, you know, with all statistics, you know. The thing is that I always prefer to give statistics, which I haven't shown much on my slides, but um, instead of, you know, uh, I mean, telling, you know, explaining someone for 10 minutes, if I don't explain any, if I show the uh, statistics through charts or bar diagrams or whatever, then it is very easier for anyone to identify, you know. So that I always prefer. But in this PPTs, I haven't. But uh, the videos that I am showing you, you will have an idea. And the reason I'm telling you that you should visit the website of India Tourism as well as uh, I'll show you today. So once you visit the website, you'll get all the statistics. So nowadays, everybody depends on the statistics. You will visit a destination, you will see, first see what type of hotels are there. Then you wanted to see the reviews and all. So how this is being done? This is being done through, you know, statistics only. And today in the market, you know, especially those who are into research field, they are doing a lot of research because a lot of application softwares are there, which with the help of that software, you know, which make your work very, uh, I mean, easier and error-free. So, and everybody, in fact, um, has faith on that. It's very valuable for any country, and especially the World Tourism Organization. Depending on this, they were able to publish the exact data because everyone's want, at the end of the day, everyone wants to know what is the output, what is the data. That is very important. So, when you see these websites on all, and you will get a clear picture, you know, uh, how like you know what is the impact where's the positive impact neg negative impacts what is the tourism inflow in our country which other states which is having the maximum tourist visits and especially the world tourism organization collects it from all the countries to make it a global projection that is what is very important like our duty as our country we have all the inputs we collect like the government of india you know all the state governments sends all the inputs, all the statistics to the government of India, Tourism Board, Ministry of Tourism. They have all the informations. Once they regulate all the informations, they frame it in a 
proper manner they send it to wo wto and what wto does they collect it all these informations from all the countries to make a global projection okay like as i told you what is the average number of guests arriving at a hotel in a year you can easily find out and there are a lot of research you know references and all once you go through the papers if you are interested to learn not only through books because uh, you can go through all these research papers also where you will get the exact information because these research papers are basically based on the studies you know uh, the you know the data has been collected both uh, you know uh, primary data as well as secondary data and they have to um, uh, visualize all analyze those data interpretation has been do, the, uh, i mean had uh, has been done analysis has been done then they come to a conclusion so once you read these research papers you also have an idea about tourism about it's not about uh, you know any particular i mean which particular country you want to know you can have the detailed information of all this so uh, you know uh, they and uh, it can be like qualitative uh, methods qualitative study it can be a quantitative study so it depends you know varies okay so um, so and of course uh, tourism is primarily seen as a demand side phenomena yes people it's now has become a demand because people wanted to visit uh, the destinations they wanted to enjoy the life not only work so you might have seen now most of the i have uh, i think i haven't uh, explained to you or maybe on the first day i have explained there's a mice m i c e that is meetings incentives conferences and events mice is there where nowadays whenever you have any conferences where uh, you know experts from different companies and all you know they participate in this conferences they have a proper discussion and all and after that you know they also get a chance fair chance to visit the uh, destination they had visited so the conference is also being held that is which is a part of their work okay they have to discuss different ideas share their ideas innovate new technology or innovation uh, or some create some new uh, create and develop some new ideas to promote their business to prepare their business strategies so that is a part of their work culture so once they are being done at the same time they also wanted to enjoy so what they enjoy the enjoyment is they have a lovely um, cocktail uh, party followed by uh, uh, you know buffet dinner and uh, where they enjoy the cuisine of that particular destination then at the end of the day maybe it's a four days conference on the last day they get i mean uh, they are being taken to visit this taken for sightseeing visit so this is where everything is being club together so that is what is known as mice okay so demand is there that is why the tourism is now being considered one of the largest industry because the demand is there because once you work you you know you earn you accumulate then you wanted to enjoy the life you wanted to enjoy the beauty of the country that is very important so demand can be uh, measured by taking into account like people money time and space okay that is very important so you have to take this this uh, statistical measures you know these are all about averages then variances then multipliers coefficients ratios and rates are there it's a little bit uh, higher on a higher level but yes it is very much necessary and why this is an importance of tourism statistics because that is how policy developments are being prepared then you provide an objective because for each and every you know why are you studying uh, tourism there is an objective behind that so they provide you the objective the then they provide you uh, quantitative information so that you can prepare the uh, marketing strategies then facilitate with a lot of um, plans uh, then investment decisions that are being uh, uh, that are being decided and also you can plan for the future development of tourism so you have to basically understand the perspectives and uh, you know what is the average like you know uh, why different types of hotels are there in a destination because every guest has a different budget to spend you know if i am going for holiday then i have to pay from my own pocket but if i am going for a uh, official purpose if i am going for a conference to attend then it is being paid by the company so you know when it is being paid by the company the company depending on your performance 
because the company makes the payment so you need not care of that you know everything is being taken care by the mm, uh, company so that is the reason why there are different classes of hotels business class hotels to motels to resort hotels then budget class hotels so all types of hotels are because that is what is the demand of the uh, people demand and uh, how the destinations are being uh, are being uh, developed in such a manner okay so uh, this is what is the tourist demand is what is the actual demand what is the potential demand now this is you know basically that is what is yield is you know actual demand is um, like you know in a in a place i i i know there would be um, potential i know all of you will get 100 out of 100 but you can score 100 out of 100 you scored 70 out of 100 so that is the actual so every uh, suppose uh, for example i'm taking the case of a hotel you know hotel is having a 100 rooms now the potential they can sell all the 100 rooms in a day but are they able to sell all the 100 rooms no they are not able to sell the 100 rooms they are able to sell only the 75 rooms so the occupancy of the hotel on that particular day is 75 percent so potential divided by actual gives you the yield basically okay so planning of tourism projects in specific locations depends mainly on the capacity to absorb tourism and it is very necessary you should know the demand and as per the demand how um, tourism is being developed and planned then there are some evolving marketing strategies uh, when you mm, mm, uh, you know uh, statistics variables usually analyze like first you need to know the demographic profile that is you know what type of customers what type of visitors are visiting uh, to uh, visiting your uh, destination your hotel it depends on the age the gender the education the occupancy your nationality uh, then uh, you know there are many factors these are you can say these are very uh, factors these are all the variable factors which uh, depends on the uh, you know uh, how you prepare the statistics when you uh, get to I mean when you find out there are uh, all this demographic profile you can easily find out the statistics the visitors who are visiting the destination what is the salary I mean you know income per year what is the uh, a, n a number of uh, visitors uh, visiting on that particular region at particular time what is the age group so with the help of all this demographic profile and all uh, there is demographic profile there is inferential prof uh, inferential statistics one is the demographic statistics which includes all this and there is the inferential statistics so these all you know that is your uh, especially when we are in the tourism industry is all about measuring the uh, customers or tourist satisfaction level depending on that only you can sell your product and that product can be in terms of hotel rooms and that product can be terms in of your arts crafts uh, your uh, food uh, everything okay <clears throat> so uh, these are some methods of uh, measurement like you know surveys are being done studies are being done at destinations uh, like how many uh, visitors are uh, visiting that particular tourist site then uh, what are the products are being uh, available at the destination so you do a survey and you also you know there is a questionnaire method nowadays you know uh, you might have seen uh, whenever you visit a uh, i mean destination you know they take your whenever you visit a hotel they take your email id so after some days you will find that a, a google questionnaire has come in your email id that is a google questionnaire okay so you have to what is uh, how did you like the place was the food being served on time did you like the um, amenities that was being provided in the hotel uh, was the uh, uh did you uh, how did you like the upkeep of the hotel where the staff uh you know uh, where they're very uh, generous to you or whether whether they're very uh, skilled or uh, you know so that is how you have to mark them and depending once they send this email so you know you also feel like because it comes on your uh, uh, email ids or your mobile uh, i mean uh, whatsapp and also you keep on clicking them and this is how do they collect and they do a statistics okay and um, of course uh, 
sometimes the problems uh, you know as tourism this, uh, industry is not well defined measurement of economic impact of tourism is difficult sometimes you uh, it is difficult because it depends on the population also you know so you don't get the correct information also you are not able to get the correct conclusion you know because you have to do the analysis of the study you know so when you analyze because you know some uh, some uh, what happened suppose there are 10 questions and, uh, in the question here and you just answer eight questions two questions you just left out so these all cre create errors and once these errors are created so sometimes it becomes very difficult to measure okay that is what happens um so some these are some tools the tourism statistics in india about like you get how much you know international tourists arrival in india which state is having the maximum uh, tourist at arrival uh, which part of the country is having the maximum tourists arrival which season of the year maximum tourists what is the age group uh, what is their i mean employment status usually they are uh, professionals or businessmen or students so this is how this you get the uh, statistics done okay so yes i also have a before moving to unit 8 i also have a small video about uh, tourism statistics one second So here you go, there comes tourism statistics procedure. So you'll have an idea, okay, how the procedure takes place basically. This is a quick video showing how you do it, how it's been done. This is how many tourists visited the Philippines, there's, you know, the sources of arrival and departure. <clears throat> this is arrival and departure cards. You need to encode those when you get all the informations. Then it is being processed. Then you prepare the reports. Then you approve and release it, which goes to WTO. Uh, we can't hear the audio of the video, ma. You cannot hear? Yes. Is it visible? Yes, it is visible, but the audio is not there. Oh, how come audio is not there? You just muted yourself. You mute. I, I, I mean, there is a... I'm seeing a mute icon. F first... One sec, uh, you tell me. Uh, uh, it should be visible. I mean, I I was it visible? You are yes, not able it was. Yes, it is visible, but I I'm not able to hear. Ache, you are not able to hear. Yes, what the video is talking about. I'm just seeing like uh, a video playing, but no, no, whatever. 
But last no time point. you saw the last time you saw the music, last video we yeah. have seen. Yes, yes. I don't know. It should not happen. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just. Uh, let's. Uh, okay. Let's uh, finish this. Maybe in the next video I can. Uh, sure, now, what, you you can share as a tab for it to work. You share as a tab, only one tab. I'm sharing only one tab only. See now, I mean. Yes, now we can. I can hear. Yes. Okay. See, mice is there. So you saw this video, had an idea? So you had an idea, Zamzami and Denmark. So today I see Victory, then Narsin, Imelda. Okay. Uh, Was it, uh, uh, would you able to uh, understand? Uh, yes, uh, yes. What, uh, Tell me. So what, what I can just say from the video, although they were not trying to explain, I can just see what was going on. Uh, mm. Mostly that was the channel of communication, like how it, it's supposed to yes. go. Like yes. there is that is channel. Mentioned. Yes. So that is what I've noticed from the video. Yes. How, uh, how the, uh, you know, like statistics is being uh, the collected. And then they uh, prepare a report of that, and then they send it to the you know head of the department. I mean the country ministry. Then the ministry send it to WTO. So you can see the proper projection of the uh, tourism related informations on WTO side. That is World Tourism Organization. Okay, that is how that is being channelized. Right, right. Uh, there you had seen all these hotels. You know they find out the occupancy report. Now if I tell you what is the occupancy report of the Taj in uh, India, what is the occupancy report of Hotel Obroys? So you can easily find out. So that is how they, you know, calculatively they do a calculation and they get all the information, they send it to the Ministry of Tourism, or if not to the Ministry of Tourism, they send it to the uh, state head. Then, state head, you know, then send it to the ministry. They compile together and then they send it to WTO. And of course, it is being all also flashed on the website. You can get all the information related, right? So now, uh, uh, moving to the next one minute. I need to complete at least uh, five units today. So 
going a little bit faster. Is it okay? You are able to understand? Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, so here we come. Uh, these are the modes of uh, transport. You know, uh, of course, when you, uh, uh, it's only not only about the destinations, but um, uh, how the mode of transport is also very important. So when we talk about the mode of transport, you know, it also comes under like, you know, uh, development uh, of infrastructure, like, um, uh, you know, uh, highways, your uh, different, uh, uh, you know, like state highway, state, I mean, all this uh, network of uh, roads to different from one state to another state. So networking has to be uh, there. So when we talk about uh, the modes of transport, like we have air travel, we have rail travel, we have road travel, then we have water travels, then uh, public transportation is there, then we have the adventurous travel. So development of tourism at any destination, that depends upon the transportation, which is very important. But at the same time, we have to ensure that the tourists are being provided safe, comfortable and convenient mode of transport. So not only that, you know, you also need to have cost effective and less time consuming means of transport and none can deny the role of transport in developing tourism at any destination globally you know that is the reason you might have seen you know that is a business strategy also uh, this is like development of means of transport like you know pre colonial period colonial period and post independent era how it has developed you know and uh, uh, see, one, you can just go through this, uh, what I was telling you, uh, especially now, uh, if you see a lot of offers are there whenever if you uh, trying to make a booking flight ticket, you know, you'll find the, uh, if you book your ticket from December to April, you will be getting a 20% discount on your flight ticket from this route to this route, you know. So, you know, what happened? This is a way of attracting the um, customers. So, you know, we are getting 20, uh, you know, 20% 20 discount. So, let's plan a booking. So, it's not only, you know, uh, uh, you will uh, plan to uh, make the booking of the flight tickets, but also at the same time, when you will be visiting that particular destination, you also at the same time book your uh, accommodation also, okay? And not only accommodation, it also covers your fooding and also then other um, ancillary expenses and all. See how tourism is trying to capture people. You know, these are all type of business strategies. And usually they try to uh, do it in the year end because, you know, people, uh, those who are working, who are working, you know, who are in private sector or, you know, government or working for government of India, they have a lot of... Um, holidays, you know, that keep on where they, uh, so I mean, holidays in the sense, they have a lot of uh, leaves, which they need to finish it within that year only. So, you know, to, so these are different types of business. So what happened, they take a full, uh, I mean, that's an opportunity for uh, the uh, customers also, so they can utilize their leave in a proper way, visiting a, a proper destination. And at the same side, on, and on the other side also, the tourist organization, they also can, can plan a proper uh, planning. They can uh, prepare or develop a proper, uh, you know, uh, tour plan for the tourists, which would, uh, which would also increase, you know, enhance the uh, economic impact on the uh, country's uh, GDP. Okay, so that is how it happens. And um, yes, uh, when we have this uh, road transport, you know, there are cars, there are buses, motorcycles, they are commonly used for road travel in tourism. And there are also road trips can offer flexibility and the opportunity to explore off the beaten path destinations. As I told you, there are uh, four lane earlier, you know, if you think of the pre-colonial uh, pre era, then, you know, there were only one single roads and all. But now there are four lane roads, you know, the distances which used to take uh, five to seven hours to uh, moving from one place to another, cover from one place to another. But now within two to three hours, you know, you can cover that distance. So that is how there is flexibility, reliability, speed, door-to-door -door services possible also, you know, if you go by road transport. And there are a lot of uh, 
uh, I mean, opportunities are also people are being employed uh, for this, not only on the construction side, but there are when this, when you travel by road, you will find a lot of, um, you know, shops uh, which are selling different, uh, I mean, not only food uh, outlets, but other, you know, you'll find all these handicraft, handy, uh, handicraft shops uh, selling antique pieces uh, pertaining to that particular destination. So it also boosts the tourism um, uh, i mean uh, i mean the uh, also the uh, boosts the uh, you know economy of that particular destination also from the tourism aspect okay uh, then you have uh, yes when we are talking about those uh, roads and also here also it comes that there are different uh, you know uh, highways you know the country has national highways and there are state highways there are district roads there are village roads unclassified village uh, roads also you know road uh, how this is this is this is one of the statistics i have uh, i mean i go i have collected for you all uh, see uh, like you know state highways like from one state to another state and national highways you know like it's known as nh so especially when we talk about 1951 the road length increased from 7 lakh kilometers in 1951 to 63.73 lakh kilometers in 22 shows the importance and potential of road transportation in India. So in 1951, the road length was 4 lakhs, 1951. And today, I mean, in 2022, I didn't have the correct, uh, I mean, 2023 uh, statistics, I didn't get the exact statistics, so I took 2022. So, you know, the statistics of 2023 will usually come out in early 2024, like you'll get in January 2024, okay? Uh, so what happened January to February? So what happened in 1951, the road length was 4 lakhs. But in 2022, the road length has increased to 63.73 lakhs. So you can understand what is the importance, what is the potential of road transportation in India. I'll show you a video on luxury trains in India, okay, um, after this one gets over. So yes, uh, talking about uh, rail travel. Trains are a very popular mode of uh, transport for tourists. You offering, you know, scenic uh, routes. You uh, once you travel by road, you can enjoy the scenic beauty, which you cannot if you travel by fare. You know, so once you are traveling by road, you can enjoy the scenic beauty, especially the greenery, the mountains, the rivers. The scenic routes makes you, you know, uh, comfortable. Uh, and of course, you also, there are a lot of uh, uh, types of trains, you know, like we have all these um, uh, express trains, we have mail trains, we have luxury trains. I'll show the video on luxury trains that India is very, uh, I mean, uh, uh, proud of. Okay. So, uh, you, I mean, you also get to have a very comfortable experience when you are traveling by train. So many tourist destinations, they have well developed rail networks that is what happens making it easy for the tourists to explore different regions by train see because you know when you uh, travel by a uh, uh, road you know some destinations they don't have railway networks but once you have the railway networks it's easily very comfortable you know you can sleep you can uh, there are coaches which can provide you the foods and all then uh, you can enjoy the beauty so, uh, you know, uh, I mean, that's a different experience altogether. And even the statistic shows that, you know, it carries about 18 million passengers on average every day. So you can wonder how many trains are running in our country, okay? 18 million passengers on an average every day. And uh, Indian railway tracks covers over around 68,000 kilometers and is one of the largest network in the world. And railways is, uh, if you are not aware of, I just wanted to mention that the railways is one of the largest employer of the world also, okay? Now, uh, not only that, you know, in our country, railways is being divided like Southern Railway, Eastern Railway, Northern Railway, Southeastern Railway, Western Railway. So there are so many zones also, you know? So this, uh, especially from one, uh, place to another place, one uh, uh, station to another, one state to another station. So this domestic tourist primarily depends upon railways, especially for long distance and cost effective 
and comfortable travel because one is cost effective and another is comfortable travel in a very less time span okay uh, yes i will i wanted to show you this palace on wheels uh, i have a video for you but uh, i should finish it that so special tourist trains like palace on wheels are operated for attracting the foreign tourists uh, especially this palace on wheels you know uh, now we have around uh, five to six trains which are operating they are known as palace on wheels i mean the trains are like palaces no less than a palace okay and they are usually you know because it is very expensive like you know each ticket cost around more than four to six lakhs so it's basically meant for attracting the foreign tourists and you have a luxury experience and you can watch the website also beside that we also have this rajdhani express rajdhani means capital so this rajdhani express you know travels from one capital to another capital so the hindi uh, i mean hindi word of uh, capital is rajdhani so that is the reason the train is known as rajdhani it moves from one state capital to delhi delhi is the capital city so we have kolkata's uh, you know west bengal capital is kolkata so it moves from kolkata to new delhi it's not kolkata it's howrah so then you have i stay in a state called orissa from bhubneshwar so we have the bhubneshwar is having a train which runs from bhubneshwar to uh, delhi so it is known as the bhubneshwar delhi rajdhani express then we have the shatabdi express then we have the duranto express these are some of the first uh, fast running trains operated for speedy movements of travelers and of course uh, you can make your bookings in just within uh, you know uh, within a few minutes with the help of a mouse provided you have a computer or laptop or your mobile and network is there internet is there then you can book a ticket within five minutes okay not even five minutes so this is possible with the help of computerized reservation system and these all usually works on the platform like global distribution system like galileo amadeus then world span and so on okay and uh, coming to the water transport water travel like we have boats we have ferries we have cruise lines uh, cruise ships which are known as cruise liners which are used for water travel that is also generates revenue for the tourism industry providing also accessibility to the islands in coastal areas coastal destinations as well as river cruises make also a comfortable journey so it is always a safe mode of transport and you can also this is also very important that india has the largest merchant shipping fleet among developing countries and ranks 19th worldwide see i have given you this uh, coastal shipping how much it is inland waterways uh, then you have foreign going ships those one, 13 major uh, ports are there in india when we have 148 minor ports that these are available in india so shipping industry is also is growing but it's slowly in the growth of india because Usually, uh, this is for you know business purposes. Plus, nowadays you know people they wanted for cruise lines, like they wanted to go to Andaman and Nicobar Islands, or sometimes there are cruise lines, you know, like Mumbai and all Goa, where you know the restaurants are there in the cruise lines, where you can enjoy your evening, you can dance uh, to the music, you can dance on the floor as per the music. You there's a bar attached, then uh, you have a cocktail dinner with a lovely buffet dinner. And you'll eat in the middle of a uh, beach, you know. And so that is how uh, I mean beaches you have. So that that is that is what you I mean those are near the beaches or also inside the sea inlands. Uh, sea uh, and, and and you have a, a spectacular view also. You know, in the evening when the lights are all on, and the music is on. So and the dance floor is ready. So that is how. So these these are all you know uh, basically um, attracting. The young customers, younger generation, they wanted to spend time and also it develops the infrastructure of the uh, particular destination. Uh, there is an economic growth also of that particular area. So uh, here we come, so here some uh, special uh, tourist launches are operated in India at Sundarban. Uh, Royal Bengal Tigers, it's a Sundarban, this is in West Bengal, it's in a state in India uh, where you'll find Royal Bengal Tigers, it's basically a wildlife sanctuary known as Sundarban Reserve 
then you have the goa tourism department which also have this uh, organizes sea cruises to attract the tourists then you we have the uh, kashmir which is known as the paradise on earth jammu and kashmir we have kashmir there are house boats uh, those house boats uh, you know there you can see this one okay these house boats are at dal lakes in kashmir they also attract tourists to a large extent okay so some i have found you know just i have taken this like some of the world's largest and longest rivers found in africa that is the nile zambezi congo and the niger the rivers are not effective as transportation routes because due to the existence of a large amount of rapids and cataracts so there is a, some other cruise lines very important royal caribbean international celebrity cruises asmara club cruises these are all in africa okay so i have just tried to find out put it on the slides then india like talking about the air transport uh, yes um, you know air travel airplanes are a common mode of uh, transport and for especially for long distance travel in tourism and allowing the uh, tourists to reach their destinations in a very short period of time that is very quickly very efficiently and in a very comfortable manner okay uh, for train it takes 24 hours uh, to reach from my place to the capital city of india whereas by uh, rajdhani express okay 24 if i take other trains it may take 36 hours but by flight it takes only 2 and 1/2 hours so that is how, okay and uh, we have different airlines like air india we have indigo we have uh, go air so different airlines are also and also india also holds the ninth position in the world in the civil aviation market okay so we are also very proud of that so also aviation plays a very important role in international travel and transport there is iata which supports international association of tour operators uh, supports aviation with global standards for airline safety security efficiency and sustainability so uh, yes there are some uh, these are some chartered flights uh, okay uh, so government of india has also permitted private operators to operate in various routes to increase the competition okay and so yes how would we uh, yes um, yes role of transport and tourism sector so uh, you know Uh, you can say uh, india plays a very important role in the transport system as i have already mentioned it is the ninth in the aviation industry you know and uh, we have improved rail networks we have improved uh, road transport aviation industry is also um, you know improving so uh, we have been uh, gifted with lot of uh, numerous destinations which are also projected on the global map and we are also very proud to have foreign tourists uh, arrivals are increasing day by uh, day so transportation is always very important is very vital to the tourism department you know tourism industry because uh, studies have shown that tourists spend almost 30 to 40% of their holiday expenditure 30 to 40% of their total holiday expenditure on transportation you know and the remaining on food accommodation and other activities that is so you know this aspect once again highlights the importance of transportation so transportation is also very important so it is necessary for tourism professional to think about safe as well as cost effective secured comfortable less time consuming and environment friendly transport especially for the developing tourism at this destinations okay and um, there are some policies also we have the national urban transportation policy which aims at providing better mobility and sustainability by focusing on people mobility and not vehicle mobility so the basic goal is to uh, as i have mentioned sustainable development because it is always a hot uh, discussion sustainable development of the road and railway infrastructure of national and international importance improvement of the transport safety encouragement of maritime and inland waterway navigation integration of national transport system so before moving to this accommodation sector i would just show you that luxury uh, trains of india okay
We were skating and had so much fun. Nani even took us bowling. Best day ever! Do you believe it? If the fantasy of traveling back in Hold on to experience some of the best luxury trains of India. These are the luxury trains. Best among all Indian luxury trains, Maharaja's Express is also one of the five most luxurious trains in the world. This half mile long train takes you on an eight day journey from Mumbai to Rajasthan, Lucknow, and back to Mumbai or Delhi and boasts of royal hospitality, fully stocked bars, lavish suites, butler services, and it's one of the most expensive trains in India. Inspired by the traveling style of the kings and rulers during different royal eras of ancient India, Deccan Odyssey is a five-star hotel on wheels that takes you to some fascinating destinations of India. Royal treatment for passengers, palace-like interiors of the cabins, multi-cuisine restaurants, lounges, a conference car. It is no less than a hotel, five-star hotel. State of the art amenities make it one of the most luxurious trains in India and in the world as well. And the journey's duration is for eight days, starting from Delhi through Agra, Jaipur, Bijapur, Hampi, and Tardoba. The Golden Chariot is one of the best luxury trains in India that takes you to some of the most famous tourist places of South India. Launched in 2008, the Golden Chariot is well known for its impeccable hospitality. The train has AC chambers with royal interiors, bars, restaurants serving multi-variety cuisine, a mini gym, an Ayurveda spa and other five-star facilities. Embark on this eight-day journey to experience a journey like no other from Bangalore through Kabini to Mysore, Hassan, Ampi, Badami, Goa, and back. One of the oldest luxury trains in India, the Heritage on Wheels showcases the traditions, the culture of Rajasthan that have been passed from one generation to another in the best manner possible. With the flows of this train being covered by local restaurant that serves authentic and continental cuisine, the rooms that never fail to reek of royal wives, this is one of those trains that you should definitely experience at least once in your lifetime. Take this four-day trip to experience luxury. Start your trip from Jaipur, making your way to Sikhanil, Pal Chapar and Shekhawati to Jaipur and back. and relaunched in 2009 to promote tourism. Here you'll find luxurious cabins, exquisite wallpapers, a stocked bar and local culture displayed by artistic and handicrafts. It is pretty much like a palace on wheels that recreates the era of kings and their royal palaces. No wonder it was voted as fourth best luxurious train in the world. This is one of the best royal trains of India to go on an eight-day journey from Mumbai to Aurangabad to Ramtek, Tadoba, Ajanta, Nashik and back. The Fairy Queen Express is one of the oldest trains providing luxury train journeys in India. Powered by the oldest serving steam locomotive built in around 1855, Fairy Queen has its own charm as it rambles through to Alwar in Rajasthan. With a mention in the Guinness Book of World Records and also a recipient of National Tourism Award, Fairy Queen easily makes it to the list of most luxurious trains in India. The duration of this journey is one night, two days, beginning from Delhi to Alwar, Niska, 
back to Alwar and then Delhi. Embark on a royal journey by the Royal Orient train and enjoy a delightful experience of traveling to famous tourist destinations on board one of the best luxurious trains in India. The palatial style comfortable cabins, multi cuisine restaurant with a watering hole bar, spacious baths, a library, and all facilities that come to your mind when you think of a five star hotel, well, the Royal Orient train has them all. The duration of this journey is 7 nights and 8 days commencing from Delhi to Chittorgarh or Udaipur to Chunagarh, Dilwara, Palitana, Sarkhej, Ahmedabad, Jaipur and back to Delhi. Well, next time you plan to travel Maharaja style, make sure you take a journey in these luxury trains of India to first-hand experience what's so surreal about it. After all, experiences make the best answers. So, did you all enjoy the video? <laughs> so, you know, that was, uh, that was uh, a video on um, the luxury trains that are being operated in the country, India, uh, depicting the art, culture, uh, you know, of uh, our country. Okay. And it's very expensive. Not only that, uh, you get to know about the, I mean, all art, culture, heritage of our country. Okay. So uh, let me move to the next chapter. Did you enjoy the video? The video was okay, Denmark? I mean, uh, audio and video. Achha, okay, fine, fine. Okay, I got to. Okay, one sec. So uh, this is the uh, unit nine. And unit nine is all about uh, tourist uh, accommodation, uh, you know, various types of uh, tourist accommodations. Like, you know, when we talk about uh, accommodation, accommodation industry, otherwise also known as the lodging industry, you know, it can be defined as a dimension of the hospitality industry, which strives on the vision and the mission of providing lodging services to the bona fide travelers in exchange of uh, money. And uh, so here you we have, you know, like many countries have, um, uh, they have recognized the importance of uh, accommodation industry in relation to tourism and the governments have really taken initiatives by providing attractive, um, you know, incentives and concessions in the form of long-term loans, then licenses and tax relief, cash grants for construction and renovation of buildings, similar other concessions to the accommodation industry. Now we have the hotels are being categorized as five star hotel, four star hotel, three star hotels, you know, the classification committee, uh, you know, we have this HRACC, it is known as the hotel and restaurant approval classification committee. They are the one who categorizes hotels as per their facilities that's been rendered to the customers services and facilities that's being rendered to the customers okay so we have also non-star hotels so these hotels are not classified we also do have you know chain of hotels now chain of hotels are not only located in india they have the properties abroad also globally then we have these palaces which were built before 1950 and after that they were converted to hotels so that is the reason they are known as the uh, heritage properties okay so uh, we have some resorts and we also do have some resorts which are located uh, you know near hill stations or beaches where you can have a beautiful view uh, so there are beach resorts there are hill resorts there are wildlife resorts in luxury as well as in a budget class categories okay and of course they are very seasonal now um, i have you know uh, and these are usually these resorts are lodges are usually meant of meant for the tourists and um, you can see in countries where economic dependence on tourism is more such accommodations are found in large numbers especially you have these mauritius you know where people depend on the tourism so you have 
different types budget class hotels to five star deluxe hotels and all all the facilities and all so tourism is their main source of income you can see so depending on that uh, where you know as i said when countries where economic dependence on tourism is more such type of accommodations like this type of accommodations are found in large number then uh, we have all these tented camps we have this heritage hotels as i have told you as I, as i have already informed you as i have told you that you know especially those hotels which are built before 1950 uh, especially they had been known as heritage hotels and the palaces the forts they are now being converted into hotels part of them are been taken by i mean is being retained by the kings and the maharajas and the rest part is being uh you know rented to um, you know like you know the the taj property the obroys properties okay so they are known as heritage hotels so there are a lot of heritage hotels in our country and especially the state run which has the maximum number of heritage hotels in our country now there are also guest houses you know guest houses you have guest houses in like uh, we have guest houses we have dug bungalows which are located in the uh, forest areas and all and there is a paying guest accommodations and also you know when you rent these guest houses the local population also earn without they they need not invest much they learn about different cultures also yeah. from the guests staying with them okay and we have all these alternative accommodations what are alternative accommodations like you know small boarding houses then tourist camps then circuit houses then duck bungalows then we have the ymca young men's christian associations so these uh, dharmashalas they form the alternate accommodation so tourism professional must always remember the tourist spends approximately 40% of their funds on room and board they must also be aware of all the options available at given destinations therefore tourists need to you know about layout design what are the different types of meal plans they must also be taken into account usually most of the hotels they uh, you know the uh, hotel rooms are based on continental plan that is room with the continental breakfast but For like package tours, you yeah, are you yeah, have yeah. Uh, modified American yeah. plan or American. What does it look like? Uh, can you unmute? Can What can you mute like? yourself, please? Can you mute yourself? <laughs> What happened? Yeah. If I look at it again. One second. Huh? What's the name of this? Ah. Water. Water. Uh, Gerald, can you mute yourself, please? Gerald, this disturbance. please sorry, mute sorry. yourself gerald sorry. excuse me ha huh. okay okay ha huh. yeah. yes sorry. okay it's okay fine fine it's now fine uh, so mm, yes so you know what happened i was telling you different types of plans in the hotels are offering uh, for their uh, guests you know you have the continental plan where along with the room breakfast is being provided you have the modified american plan where along with the room breakfast <sighs> plus either lunch or day you know any major meal is provided then you have the american plan where along with the room you also have breakfast plus lunch plus dinner now these are uh, you know uh, especially this modified american plan and american plan are meant uh, i mean they are usually meant for the uh, groups like you know who are arriving not any uh, individual uh, travelers they are meant for the uh, groups so th those are being design they are been packaged as per the rule as per the needs of the mm, uh, customers so tourists what they need to have they need to uh, have a proper layout design and meal plan but they must take into account all these features so professional must understand the potential customer and promote the correct category accordingly then uh, so accommodation is a very complex affair professional must be aware of all these you know like leisure activity what are the cultures promoting while promoting accommodation you know the ecological and environmental considerations they should 
take into account then uh, along with the hotel, i mean it's not only about the accommodation it is also about the fooding uh, further considerations include food and beverage you know like different types of restaurants like fine dining restaurant or specialty restaurant then bars should be available then and other activities should be there like you know you may have the hotel may have a swimming pool the hotel may have a gym but the guest can use the facilities the hotel may have like sauna the hotel may have a uh, uh, different um, uh, you know like health clubs and all should be provided okay then uh, of course the housekeeping is included professional must not adopt hard and fast rule flexibility is always a good motto of the good resort housekeeping is basically who are responsible for upkeep of the hotels now there are the frequent travelers there is one fits they are known as fit free individual traveler that is a single individual traveler you know he has his own travel plans usually fits are from corporates and then you have the git that is a group inclusive traveler where a lot of customers i mean a lot i mean especially these gits means these are basically they uh, uh, i mean usually the travel agents are in charge of this uh, group inclusive traveler and um, then you are in a group you can uh, whenever you visit in hotel you are being given lot of discount because you are uh you you are uh, you know like at the same time you will be occupying around 10 to 15 rooms you know so that is a reason a lot of discount is being it varies from you know 15 to 20 to 20 to 30 percent on the discount so uh, this is known as group inclusive travel and of course the service is being rented uh, rendered to the customers depending on the number of visitors destination and products if you are a regular visitor of a, of a particular hotel at a particular destination then you will be given a corporate rate if you are uh, if you visit on the weekend you have a different rate if you work for the government you have a different rate if you are a member of fhri yesterday i told you about fhri fhri is about federation of hotel and restaurant association of india if you are a member of fhri you also get some relaxation on the room rent as well as on the food okay 30% discount so the service depends upon the number of visitors that is always there is an agreement between the hotel and the company depending on the volume of business the hotel provides a discount to the company guests so how to get information you can always get informations can be obtained from hotels restaurants that is being published by fhri then there are online travel agents you know make my trip go make my trip go ebibo uh, then uh, uh, you know that is the irct indian railway and catering transport corporation you can get all this um, all this so um uh, then easy go all these trips are online travel agents where you have get all the informations and advance booking of accommodation is always best and tourist must be instructed to do so then um uh, you should you know uh, oh so this is about uh, i have another small video about tourism accommodation last unit is a unit 10 uh, so uh, so let me just uh, i'll show you the video later on after let me finish this there's only then unit 10 that is about informal services in tourism like you know basic difference between formal and informal sector unit 10 is about the informal services in tourism so what are the dimensions of informal sector so uh, what is formal and what is informal formal is basically making use of modern often imported technology that is informal employs less mechanized techniques and employ older people and formal we have a structured workforce is required that is for informal it is very unstructured workforce and for formal fixed capital is high and for informal the fixed capital is low and there are different types of activities in informal sectors of tourism maybe you are self employed guides you know then souvenir business people in open air stalls you can have your own uh outlets like food outlets or, or food stalls or you know uh, all these uh, handicraft uh, or souvenir uh, stalls then you may be the guest house owner or uh, you can be a self employed um, uh, entrepreneur used by the tourist agencies such as guides or drivers or helpers assistants etc and so on okay uh, then 
nature of informal structure, Nature, like uh, sure. when we talk about uh, informal structure, they operate sure. without sure. legal. Why, why it is known as uh, informal structure? Because they operate without <laughs> legal recognition <laughs> and are neither registered nor officially taxed. As I told you, if you want to have open a bar, then you should pay the tax, you should have a proper license, you know, so the you are recognized every year, you have to renew the license, you have to pay some taxes and all everything that means you are registered. But there are some who are operating earning money, but they are not in they are not registered, they are not legally recognized. So those are known as informal structure type of business. So uh, data availability plays a vital role in deciding the formal and informal sector uh, based on the, that is the data that is being collected by the Central Statistical Organization, Ministry of Planning, Government of India. Uh, hotels and uh, restaurants also cover this enterprises uh, like, you know, there are many hotels, you know, they do not have the proper uh, they are not been approved by the uh, you know particular uh, development authority but they run the business so you know what happened after a few years these are being demolished you know that is really very uh, i mean it is not uh, i mean uh, i mean it should be uh, the business should run in an organized manner in a legal way but this uh, you know especially in the tourist destinations uh, you will find lot of uh, cropping up this type of hotels you know fire people having their own houses they rent it you know uh, making a three four storage building and rent but they don't have proper approval from the development authority from the proper government from the pollution control board approval from the pollution control board so this is you know they makes them informal and after some years you know what happens when the government comes to know they demolish all this type of uh, struck infrastructures and all okay so you should be very careful about and um, especially nowadays even you have different types of stalls you know that can be cafes that can be restaurants that can be cafeterias then you have the snack bars ice cream parlors and outlets so some are uh, uh, some are you know they are being um, funded by the governments uh, i mean partially you know partial of their uh, profit goes to the government and the rest uh, is being retained with the owner itself so that is how they run so you know it also provide is also a type of providing employment to the youth also so you know not only providing employment to the youth but also a, a development of infrastructure also you know uh, you can say it boosts the uh, boosts the uh, uh, tourism impact uh, on a particular destination and uh, also has a positive impact on the uh, tourists visiting that particular area so uh, these are the enterprises are divided into basically three types one is own account enterprises and the direct establishments okay so informal sector is predominantly in the restaurant business and marginally in the hotel business why it is very much in the restaurant business because everybody you know uh, like you know uh, the, everybody sometimes they need to have their breakfast they need to have some snacks then they want to go for ice cream parlors and they want to go sometimes they want for liquors and all so that is the reason why informal sector is very predominantly high in the restaurant business whereas in the hotel business it is comparatively low uh, productive capital emoluments and profits uh, yes productive capital is basically the sum of the values of fixed assets and working capitals when we talk about fixed assets it includes basically the buildings machineries and all working capital that is the capital involved in stock of foods rings crockery linen and all so informal sector enterprises have a low productive capital and differential profitability between formal and informal sector is associated with profit per enterprise which has been uh, seen as a rise with the amount of productive capital and formal sector as a high productive capital base so um, there is a uh, and of course the productive or uh, productivity of labor is much higher in the formal sector then there are souvenir sellers uh, in open and air stores what do you mean by souvenir souvenir basically an item which is brought or being taken by the tourists uh, during their visit to different places 
order to remember the place. So when you visit uh, Agra uh, Taj Mahal, uh, that's in India, one of the seven wonders of the world, you have get a souvenir. So they, and you can keep it in the showcase of your uh, house. So when you see the showcase, then you remember, yes, I had been to uh, Taj Mahal, okay, at Agra, India, okay. So these are like what a souvenir is all about. So tourist host interaction, one is the tourist, another is the host, that is the stakeholders, the local communities. So the tourist host interaction may end in emergence of completely novel crafts, that is new crafts, unrelated to culture, but are produced as to cater the demand of the tourist market. And of course, you need to tourists also look for items that are produced with indigenous materials by the skilled artisans. Then what happened when the souvenir, they also reflects the art and craft of that particular area. Uh, so it is very important. So you need to have a proper designing and crafting of the uh, product, which gives it a value. And prices should also be nominal. Okay. Um, so souvenir should not be commonplace, but exotic. It should be exotic. So uh, then you have the street guides who helps you to uh, provide with the social resources that are being required by the tourists for a price. Uh, then, uh, of course, there are some positive uh, impacts, there are negative uh, impacts. So as a tourist uh, professional, it is very important for you to understand all these dimensions of the informal sector in the context of tourism industry as a whole. So that is, you know, you should always remember. So today's class was... Um, uh, all about modest of, you know, we learned about uh, rules, regulations, that is tourism legislations, about the modes of transport and its importance, the role of transport in tourism sector, then types of accommodation, then as well as the informal sectors in tourism. So before I conclude today's session, I wanted to show you to one video and about also the India's uh, tourism website. Okay, just a minute. This is a small video, one second, about the accommodation sector. One See, these are motels on highways.
these are resorts with a scenic beauty So uh, that was uh, that was about uh, uh, types of accommodation. I just wanted to show you one more thing. Tomorrow, today you can go home and explore on this particular website. Okay, one sec, one minute. Uh, Miss, uh, I mean, Soumya Mishra has has anything to say? Okay, I'll just uh, one sec. I wanted to show you this. One Yeah, this is the uh, this is a website. Okay, this is our uh, uh, honorable uh, prime minister of our country, Sri Narendra Modi ji. So, what I wanted to show you, uh, see, you know, this is it. Uh, where is that ministry? One, one minute, home ministry. One sec. So, yeah. One minute, huh? I'll show you just uh, just a minute. This is Ministry of uh, Tourism, Government of India. Yeah, is it visible to y'all? Anything or not visible? Is it visible to y'all? Okay, okay. So you can see this. This is, uh, you know, this is a Ministry of uh, Tourism, Government of India. So, you know, you can go through this website. Uh, you can write on the Google Ministry of Tourism, Government of India. So there on the dashboard, you can know about us, you know, different uh, tourism uh, summit, the schemes, the different types of schemes that is being developed by your country, uh, that is being uh, launched by your uh, schemes that is being launched by your country. Then um, about some uh, uh, photographs, you know, about the tourism destinations. So you can have a look on this you can kindly go to the dashboard and any informations regarding tourism you can get all this so you'll have a little bit idea you know especially and i wanted to say the year 2023 has been you know uh, you know it has been said the visit india year 2023 so there are a lot of uh, you know you'll have a lot of idea and all okay so that's all for today and um, that's all for today um denmark victory any queries uh imelda do you have any questions yes denmark do you have any questions as such am i audible Yes, uh, Victor, Denmark, 
Imelda, do you have any questions? No, ma. Thank you so much. So no you, question you, yet. you got to see the video. You saw the videos and the last one the, I showed you that's on Ministry of Tourism website. You can export on that Ministry of Tourism, Government of India. If you export that, I've shown you so you can have, uh, you know, informations about the uh, Department of Tourism, how it runs, what are about the statistics we studied all about, the different types of accommodations, uh, you know, you can get a uh, idea. Okay. So I suggest you go through that. You just export that. So all of you have a good day. Uh, Denmark, yes, you have any queries? Did you like the videos? And all? Uh, no. Yes, tell me. Actually, but it's just like a concern. Uh, mm. People who are here for the class, because I shared a WhatsApp group so that I will be sharing the slide, the one you sent. Mm -hmm. I shared the link to the WhatsApp group in the in the in the message uh, section. They can join it so that they will get the slides. Okay, you can tell your uh, uh, you know other learners also. Uh, so yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. I mean uh, that is. Otherwise, everything is. Uh, easily understandable whatever i am you know explaining that uh, you're able to understand yeah, sure. you're enjoying the videos and whatever i'm explaining you have any questions any queries you can always ask in my class okay so i'll send you tomorrow's video today itself right so you can go through if you have any questions you can ask me tomorrow denmark so I'm basically coordinating with Denmark. Others can get in that WhatsApp group and they can access the uh, uh, this PPTs and all, right? Okay, so that's all for today. Have a great day. Then see you tomorrow. Okay, take care. Thank you.